winter or was it in summer, as you remember? It would have been August, September. Well, sort of what time of the day did, the, did it happen? The morning. Very early morning or sort of mid-morning or? No, no, three o'clock in the morning. Oh, three o'clock in the morning. That is early in the morning. Where did it take place? Where exactly? Okay, um, we were approximately, uh, oh, crikey, I can't recall if it was the 10, no, it can't be the 10, or the 30 kilometre sign north of Narrabri. What, what was the highway? The, the new highway. It was in the Tilliga Scrub. Oh, okay, so pretty much you were between some one of the major towns there. Between Coonabarabran and Narrabri. Uh, actually, north, north of Coonabarabran it was because um, it was before the, um, the turn-off. Um, there's a turn-off that goes to Gunnedah, I think it is. Yeah. It was before that, so it must have been uh, 30 kilometres north of, um, of uh, Coonabarabran. Okay, and because what sort of a car were you driving? Uh, Judy actually she won Tirana. Did it have just normal, normal lights or did you have driving lights? I had driving lights on it. I could see about uh, uh, probably good 100 metres ahead. And and the road was pretty well lit up? No, the road wasn't lit up. It was a clear night and there was a truck coming the other way. Oh, OK. How, how, OK, well, look, just, just take me through what happened. OK, we're driving along. We're doing about 90 miles an hour. Who, who was we? Uh, a friend of mine and I. Yeah. Um, we were from, at the time, we were living in Shepparton, Victoria. Yeah. Um... Um, I was driving, mm-hmm. he was asleep next to me, to help us keep awake, um, we had the stereo turned up and the windows down, mm-hmm. and um, there were lots of dead kangaroos on the road, and what, what looked like to me uh, a fairly large wild pig was on the road in front of us. Yeah, it looked like a wild pig. Anyway, so um, I slowed down, I was doing 90 miles an hour, so I slowed down, um, I stirred my mate, he said, what's going on? I said, look at the size of this pig. And when we got closer, I flicked the driving lights off and on, off and on, uh, and it wouldn't move. So I slowed down even further, um, slowed down enough to put it into third gear, and there was still a truck coming the other way. He would have been uh, probably between five to 700 metres away. He was heading north, we were heading south. And then I said, crikey, look at the size of this thing. We were in a Tirana, and it, it probably had the ability to turn sideways and look at us in the windscreen. It was fairly big. So I flicked the lights on it again, and at, at that stage I went down to second gear, and then it stood up, and we were about 50 metres from it, and it stood up, and I went, shit, have a look at this. And he goes, what the fuck, that? <laughs> Shivers. This thing's up on, a, up on a tiny leg, and I said, mate, it's three o'clock in the morning, um, I must be dreaming, but I've never seen a pig get up on a tiny leg like that. Just stood there, it was covered in hair, it was brown, brownish, reddish sort of hair, I guess the light was changing the colour of it a bit. It was, uh, had no neck, so it must have been a rugby player. It was hairy, um, that's all we saw, never, never saw any sexual organs, just a lot of hair and stink. What, you could smell it? Well, we drove past it, we were in second gear, so we were going pretty slow. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and we were stunned to the point where we nearly drove into it. And thinking back, we should have driven into it. Mm. So, w- what happened as you were getting closer and closer? Okay, we, we got closer. Um, we shit ourselves. We, went, we had to actually go onto the other side of the road to get around it, uh, and the truck coming the other way, I saw his lights dip, which means he was hitting the brakes as well. And we drove around it, and then I changed back a gear, revved the truck, uh, revved the truck, revved the car up, did a, a really quick turn, turned around. This thing bent over, picked up the kangaroo carcass off the road, and ran off into the bush. So I grabbed the torch out of the glove box, pulled up, and I took off into the bush after it. And, um... Anyway, I only, I only went off the road probably 20 feet or so, and I thought, what the fuck are you doing? I went back to the car, and Warren had the uh, windows wound up and the doors locked. I said, let me in. He goes, no fucking way, you're mad. He goes, let's get out of here. So um, we jumped the car, had a look on the road. There was a big drag mark. All the stuff had been dragged off the road. The, the carcass um, had left a, um, a drag mark on the gravel on the side of the road. And then we... Uh, then we drove into Coonabarabran, we pulled up at the first service station on the left and Warren went in and had a cup of coffee while I filled the car up and the bloke serving said, uh, what's the matter with your mate? And uh, I said, oh, we saw something up the road and it frightened shit out of him. And he goes, what was it? And I said, oh, mate, I don't know, just fill the car up, let's go. He goes, no, no, seriously, what was it? And I said, oh, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, he was almost as spooky as what we saw on the road. <laughs> so he said, look, come into the server and have a look. So I went in the restaurant where Warren was, and there's all these hand-drawn pictures up on the wall. I said, that's what we saw. I said, what the fuck is this thing? He goes, I 
the alley and I looked at Warren and said, let's get the fuck out of here. These people are real kooks. And um, we jumped the car and took off. But what happened was someone must have got our registration plate because over the years, um, at the time, my car was registered to my parents' farm mm -hmm. and they contacted my mother, who in turn contacted me. So over the years, I've been in the army and out of the army and they tried to contact mm. and, uh, The only way they had of known was but um, they would have got my registration number as we took off out of the survey. Oh, jeez. That's the only way. Yeah. When you first saw this thing on the road, about how far ahead was it? Okay, about 50... 25, 50, 25 to 50 metres. I'm trying to gauge the distance. Yeah, it's a bit tough. Yeah, um, 25 to 50 metres. That's when we got down to second gear, the driving lights were up on it, and it stood up, and we just went, whoa! Well, so you were saying that it, was, it must have been crouched down... It was on its hands and knees. Oh, okay, over this, over a kangaroo carcass? Yep. That was in the middle of the road? Yeah, it was eating it. It was eating it? Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, what was the, um... Its head was bobbing up and down as, as though we didn't see it eating, as though it was eating it. Okay, now on both sides of the road, is this he a heavily scrubbed area or lightly scrubbed um, area? Yeah, it's a very heavily scrubbed area, but the overall width of the road would have been, in that area, would have been the side we were on, the nearest bush to the side of the road would have been four or five metres. On the other side of the road, it would have been about 30 metres. They've cleared it for future construction, obviously. Now, as you came up on it, um, its head's bobbing up and down. Yep. Did it ever turn around direct to, re you know, to, or did it turn up, did it stand up with its back to you or with its face to you? No, it, it um, I was driving up, I, I flicked my lights at it. Or well, something you never forget. Yeah. Um, I was flicking my lights at it. Uh, the driving lights on the train were very powerful. Then it just sort of, it got up off its hands and knees as though you and I would. And it didn't stand there with its hands on its hips. It just got up and stood there and looked. Looked at you? Uh, look, or looked at the car, yeah. It, uh, we never made eye contact. We never saw its face. It, it was hairy. It was brown. It was. It had a lot of facial hair. Yeah. Um, but maybe we were shitting ourselves that much. I just really didn't want to take time. And um, and we we just looked at it. We went, wow, what's going on? Yeah. Okay. But when it stood, it did. It, it stood and it turned to look at you. So it was. It was face on. But you didn't get a sense of its face. What, do you think that was because you just? Didn't take it in, or did you? Do you think it was because it was covered in hair, or? Yeah, it was big. I stand six foot five, leaning against the side of a Tirana. It probably would have been estimated probably, probably seven and a half, maybe eight feet. But getting back to the face, you didn't get a sense of what it looked like. I mean, you know, if oh. I said to you, was it like a? No, the driving light didn't aim that high. Uh, so we only saw its face from a distance, and as we got closer, more concerned about getting around it than going through it. Okay, now, where was it standing? Was it on your side of the road or dead smack in the middle or on the other side? The centre of the carriageway. Right. In south. You went to move the car around it. What did it do then? It followed us. It, it turned, um, using its feet, it turned around and watched us as we drove past. And that's when we got the smell because it was on Warren's side of the car then, uh, on the passenger side. And it just smelled like, um, I don't know, it smelled like crook. someone being crook on it. <laughs> yeah. Now, it would have... Um, it would have only been a few feet away at that stage. Oh, yeah, look, it was um, it, it was close enough for Warren to reach out the window and touch. And we, and we were driving past it. Second gear, we would have been doing probably, I don't know, 20 mile an hour max, 40 kilometres an hour there, we would have been doing something like that. If that. Now, you mentioned it was pretty was pretty big. Did you get a sense of how much it might weigh? Was it a solid-looking thing or was it yeah, thin? Yeah, solid-looking, yeah. Did you get a sense of, like, muscles under the hair, or, or was it you didn't see that, you just saw hair? No, there was a distinct shape of a uh, person, actually. Just really tall, no neck, broad shoulders, uh, just lots of hair. Mm. Did you get a sense when you got closer to see, did you see the, did you get an idea of uh, hair colour, as opposed to, was it black, yep. or was it brown, or...? Uh, it was a brownie colour, and with the light on it, you know how uh, some people with dark hair dye their hair, to hair uh, a light, slight sort of reddish colour? Yeah. Orange colour was like that, in the light it was like that. Yeah. Tell me about the arms and the legs. Did you get a sense of that? Or? Uh, they were hairy, no solid. Was they... I couldn't, couldn't determine any sexual organs, but its crutch was about... Uh, oh, crikey, what are we looking at? It would have been probably roof height on the car. The, the, the arms, did they come down to the waist, or were they shorter, or were they longer? The arms that came down to just below the crutch level, so probably about four to six inches. Do you think they were... Was it, did it look like... I mean, did that remind you of a person or did it look a bit odd or a bit strange or...? Oh, everything at that night was pretty strange. Yeah. Themselves. I mean, did they look longer than... A, if it was a hairy, like a person... If it, if it was sort of the same 
build and proportions as a man. I'm just holding my hand down the side of my waist here, and it probably, uh, and my hand hangs a little below my crotch area. So it was just the same as that. Did you get a sense of hands or feet, or don't remember it, or? I don't remember that at all. Did the hair on it? Did it look? Um, you know, was it pretty wild and woolly, or was it relatively smooth? You know, like a like a bear, fairly short haired. Uh, it was wild. It was pretty long. I'd say strands probably. I don't know, two or three inches. So you didn't get a sense of the face, or I mean, you just saw hair. There wasn't much else apart from hair. No, no. We couldn't look up. Like we're driving past it. We're sitting at about crutch height, mm. uh, and that's what we were looking at as we got the close enough to drive past it. Okay. Once you passed it, what happened then? Um, I looked straight in the mirror, and it was still looking at us. So we were in second gear, so I, I did a big hand braking and spun around. That's when the truck coming the other way, he slowed down. And I could tell that because his lights dipped. Yeah. Um, he, he, was, he was hitting the brakes, he saw what was going on. And we spun around, and by the time the car had turned around and I put it back into first gear, this thing had bent over, and it was picking up the carcass off the road, and it was, as it, and it was walking off. So, you know, how a footy player scoops up a footy and walks off? Yeah. Just like that. Just picked the carcass and dragged it off. So it didn't put it over its shoulder, just carried it in its arms? No, it just dragged it. Dragged it next to it. Oh, okay, was dragging it by a leg or...? Oh, mate, I don't know. It was pretty wrecked. It had been hit by a truck. Yeah, so it just dragged it off and into the, into the trees? Yeah, into the bush, yep. Did you see it walk into the trees or you just saw, just saw it disappear out of the mirror? Oh, no, no. We had full vision of that. It, it walked off. It walked just like you and I would. Yeah. There was no sound. Um, the, car was, the car was making all the sound, mate. It was ribbon. And, and it, just, it just dragged this thing off? Yep. From when you first started to see it to when you actually ended, you know, when it ended, would you say it was um, one minute, two minutes, three minutes? Okay, uh, from the time we saw it in the driving lights, it would have been driving up to it, uh, seeing it, it stood up, uh, doing the hand, hand brakey, coming back to it, because by the time we did the hand brakey, we would have been about 50 feet away from it, but the lights were shining straight at it. So when you turned around, you had it back in the front lights of the car? Oh, yeah, and... Um, it, what was it doing? It was midway through dragging, or was it... Did, it, did it, it, when, it when, when it saw that we had turned around, that's when it started walking, right? And it, t it sort of turned to its side a little bit, picked up the carcass, and then walked off, st gradually standing up as it walked off and dragging this thing off into the bush with it. So you actually saw it, it, it had been immobile, then it, like, reached... Tell me what happened. Did it reach out, you saw a hand come out or whatever, and it dragged it, or...? It stepped to the side, bent down, bent down, picked up the carcass, and as it stood up, it, it also walked off into the bush. Sorry, did you actually say how long the whole thing was in view for, or did you... I'm trying to remember now, yeah. probably uh, a good 60 seconds. Yeah. Okay, this was, are you talking the total thing, or the... Yeah, from the time we first saw it to the time I saw it disappear into the bush, and then I, I grabbed the torch out of the glove box. Mm -hmm. By this time the truck had um, slowed right down to almost a stop, it was behind us. Did it, did it actually pass you at that point, or...? Went right past, it yeah. didn't stop at all, actually. Mm. You grabbed the torch. What did you do when you grabbed the torch? I grabbed the torch. I got out of the car. Uh, Warren said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go after this thing. Some, something to that. Like that, I don't know. I don't remember. Mm. And, um, and I just uh, pointed the torch at the, uh, the marks on the gravel. Because the gravel is a um, yellowy, orangey colour. And I, and I saw the, the um, marks on the gravel. And then there's sort of like a sandy, loamy type soil. It's a white, sandy sort of soil around there. Yeah. And the drag marks went into that. Uh, I followed it. And when it was darkness behind me and I could no longer see the car, I thought, shit, what the hell am I doing here? And I went, fuck me. So I ran back to the car, and that's when I shit myself. Mm. I, I, I didn't shit myself until that very moment, and then I got back in the car and Warren said, you're mad, mate. <laughs> A little wonder. When you got outside, did you, I mean, was there anything you noticed? Did you notice, um... No, no, I was excited, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Remember when you you passed it and you had a smell, did you, was there the smell around when you got outside, or? You, or did you only hit it the first time when you went right by it? When we, went, when we uh, drove by it. You didn't smell it later? No, no, I don't recall. I don't recall any smell whatsoever, actually. Huh. Yeah. That's... Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, well, I was going to say, it really seems to have stuck a lot in your mind. I mean, is this... Oh, something you never forget, you know? Um, I'm, I'm the world's biggest skeptic. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can say to you, all, all the things that we've talked about over the last, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, mm. because it's stuck in my mind, but until I actually touch the thing and, and feel it for myself, um, then I don't know. But, I mean, how could anybody have hoaxed what you've seen, what you saw? It's out in the middle of the bush, 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm. Who'd want to fake it? Mm. <laughs> when the bloke from the survey, he was still on the car, but he said, well, come inside and have a look at this. There's a place where truckies sit. 
while we were in there, like we didn't piss off straight away, but while we were there, they told us the story of some truckie who um, parked on a wayside stop in the middle of Pilliga Scrub during the night uh, and had a sleep and heard scratching on his door. This is hearsay. There's not concerned whatsoever. So <laughs> he heard scratching on his door. Um, he pulled the curtain back on his sleeper and saw this thing's face. And then he said, then they showed me the photo on the wall of the scratches on the truck door. If you were to say it was, I mean, would you say it looked more like, um, did it look more like a hairy person or a hairy...